Hi, I'm Sue. Thank you for joining me for today's Bible reading for September 19th. We are reading Hosea 1-7 through from the World English Bible. And since this is the beginning of a new book, I want to refer you to two links that are in the description of the YouTube, this YouTube video. And one of them is the Bible Project Overview of Hosea. And one of them is the introduction to the book of Hosea that I recorded a couple years ago. Um, can't read my own writing there. But let me just give you, even though some of, you know, everything really that you need to know uh, to get a general overview of the book, a framework that will help understand the book as we read through, is in those two in, uh, introductions. But let me just give you a few little tidbits here. The author of this book was Hosea. And it was written in the 8th century, between 755 and 725, they believe. So it's 2,800 years ago this was written. Uh, Hosea lived in the northern kingdom of Israel. He was told by God to marry a prostitute named Gomer, and he had three children with her. This is a prophetic symbol of God's marriage to Israel and her adultery with idols, and God's decision that he had to make divorce Israel or renew the covenant with her. And there's a few themes. There are a few themes. Hope and mercy, God's steadfast love, and the unfailing aspect of truth and love. Now, those aren't just words. You know, it's easy for us to gloss over those flowery words, but they're key components of this book and just vital elements of it. Another part of the theme is sin, judgment, and forgiveness. Also really important. It's about betrayal in the face of faithfulness, dishonor, and disregard. Betrayal in the face of faithfulness, dishonor, and disregard. Do you know anyone who's ever experienced that? That's that's one of the things that's going to emerge out of us reading this story. It's about political and moral corruption that, to my mind, always develops in any civilization or empire, which I personally believe is why God collapses those empires. They get to that point to where they're they're not fixable, right? It's a monopoly game and all the power and money gets to the top and it's corrupt. And the answer Hosea presents to that political moral corruption is to return to the Lord. In Exodus 45, 9, it says, stop violence and destruction, practice righteousness and justice. Stop violence and destruction, practice righteousness and justice. So I like to say, stop violence and destruction by practicing righteousness and justice. It's really a simple answer, isn't it? It sounds simple anyway. Also in here, we're going to see the mention of Ephraim. God speaking to Ephraim. And Ephraim was just one of the prominent tribes of Israel. So this is about a strong, loving husband. Strong countenance toward his unfaithful bride. This is a metaphor of God and Israel. And from that, we really can extrapolate. It's a metaphor of Christ and the church. So with that, let's get, get busy reading. The first heading is Hosea's Marriage and Children. Yahweh's word came to Hosea, son of Beeri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, in the days of Jeroboam, son of Joash, king of Israel. When Yahweh spoke at first by Hosea, Yahweh said to Hosea, Go take for yourself a wife of prostitution and children of unfaithfulness, for the land commits great adultery forsaking Yahweh. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, and she conceived and bore him a son. Yahweh said to him, Call his name Jezreel. For yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel on the house of Jehu, and will cause the kingdom of the house of Israel to cease. It will happen in that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. She conceived again and bore a daughter. Then he said to him, Call her Lo Ruama, for I will no longer have mercy on the house of Israel that I should in any way pardon them. But I will have mercy on the house of Judah, and will save them by Yahweh their God, and will not save them by bow, sword, battle, horses or her horsemen. Now when she had weaned Lurama, she conceived and bore a son. He said, Call his name Loami, for you are not my people, and I will not be yours. Yet the number of the children of Israel will be as the sand of the sea, which can't be measured or counted. And it will come to pass that in the place where it was said to them, You are not my people, they will be called sons of the living God. The children of Judah and the children of Israel will be gathered together and they will appoint themselves one hand, I'm sorry, one head, and will go up from the land, for great will be the day of Jezreel. Israel's adultery rebuked. 
Say to your brothers, my people, and to your sisters, my loved one, contend with your mother, contend for she is not my wife, neither am I her husband, and let her put away her prostitution from her face and her adulteries between her breasts, lest I strip her naked and make her bare as in the day that she was born and make her like a wilderness and set her like a dry land and kill her with thirst. Indeed, on her children I will have no mercy, for they are children of unfaithfulness, for their mother has played the prostitute. She who conceived them has done shamefully, for she said, I will go after my lovers who give me bread and my water, my wool and my flax, my oil and my drink. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up your way with thorns, and I will build a wall against her that she can't find her way. She will follow after her lovers, but she won't overtake them, and she will seek them, but won't find them. Then she will say, I will go and return to my first husband, for then it was better with me than now. For she didn't know that I gave her the grain, the new wine, and the oil, and multiplied to her silver and gold, which they used for Baal. Therefore I will take back my grain in its time, and my new wine in its season, and will pluck away my wool and my flax, which should have covered her nakedness. Now I will uncover her lewdness in the sight of her lovers, and no one will deliver her out of my hand. I will also cause all her celebrations to cease, her feasts, her new moons, her sabbaths, and all her solemn assemblies. I will lay waste her vines and her fig trees, about which she had said, she has said, These are my wages that my lovers have given me, and I will make them a forest, and the animals of the field shall eat them. I will visit on her the days of the Baals to which she burned incense, when she decked herself with her earrings and her jewels and went after her lovers, and forgot me, says Yahweh. Israel's adultery forgiven. Therefore, behold, I will allure her and bring her in the wilderness and speak tenderly to her. I will give her vineyards from there in the valley of Achor for a door of hope, and she will respond there as in the days of her youth. And as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt, it will be in that day, says Yahweh, that you will call me husband and no longer call me my master. For I will take away the names of the Baals out of her mouth, and they will no longer be mentioned by name. In that day, I will make a covenant for them with the animals of the field and with the birds of the sky and with the creeping things of the ground. I will break the bow, the sword and the battle out of the land and will make them lie down safely. I will betroth you to me forever. Yes, I will betroth, or betroth. I will betroth you to me in righteousness, in justice, in loving kindness, and in compassion. I will even betroth you to me in faithfulness, and you shall know Yahweh. It will happen in that day. I will respond, says Yahweh. I will respond to the heavens, and they will respond to the earth. And the earth will respond to the grain and the new wine and the oil, and they will respond to Jezreel. I will sow her to me in the earth, and I will have mercy on her who had not obtained mercy. And I will tell those who were not my people, you are my people, and they will say, my God. <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> waiting for restoration Yahweh said to me go again go again love a woman loved by another and an adulteress even as Yahweh loves the children of Israel though they turn to other gods and love cakes of raisins so I bought her for myself for 15 pieces of silver and a homer and a half of barley I said to her you shall stay with me many days you shall not play the prostitute and you shall not be with any other man I also I will also be so toward you. For the children of Israel shall live many days without a king and without a prince and without sacrifice and without sacred stone and without ephod or idols. Afterward, the children of Israel shall return and seek Yahweh their God and David their king and shall come with trembling to Yahweh and to his blessings in the last days. God's case against Israel. Hear Yahweh's word, you children of Israel. For Yahweh has a charge against the inhabitants of the land. Indeed, there is no truth, nor goodness, nor knowledge of God in the land. There is cursing, lying, murder, stealing, and committing adultery. They break boundaries, and bloodshed causes bloodshed. Therefore the land will mourn, and everyone who dwells in it will waste away. With all living things in her, even the animals of the field and the birds of the sky, yes, the fish of the sea, also die. Yet let no man bring a charge, neither let any man accuse. For your people are like those who bring charges against a priest. You will stumble in the day, and the prophet will also stumble with you in the night. And I will destroy your mother. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you, that you may be no priest to me. Because you have forgotten your God's law, I will also forget your children. As they were multiplied, so they sinned against me. I will change their glory to shame. I will feed on the sin of my people and set, no, excuse me, they feed on the sin of my people and set their heart on their iniquity. It will be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and will repay them for their deeds. They will eat and not have enough. They will play the prostitute and will not increase because they have abandoned giving to Yahweh. Prostitution, wine, and new wine take away understanding. My people consult with their wooden idol and answer to a stick of wood. 
Indeed, the spirit of prostitution has led them astray, and they have been unfaithful to their God. They sacrifice on the tops of the mountains and burn incense on the hills, under oaks and poplars and terebinths, because its shade is good. Therefore your daughters play the prostitute, and your brides commit adultery. Warnings for Israel and Judah. I will not punish your daughters when they play the prostitute, nor your brides when they commit adultery, because the men consort with prostitutes, and they sacrifice with the shrines of prostitutes. Excuse me, they sacrifice with the shrine prostitutes, so the people without understanding will come to ruin. Some of those things to me are so obvious, and to just blindly go in there and do them callously, I mean, how do they not know and realize how detestable that is to God? I'm going to read that part again. I will not punish your daughters when they play the prostitute, nor your brides when they commit adultery, because the men consort with prostitutes, and they sacrifice with the shrine prostitutes, so the people without understanding will come to ruin. Though you, Israel, play the prostitute, yet don't let Judah offend, and don't come to Gilgal, neither go up to beth Aven, nor swear as Yahweh lives. For Israel has behaved extremely stubbornly, like a stubborn heifer. Then how will Yahweh feed them like a lamb in a meadow? A frame is joined to idols, leave him alone. Their drink has become sour. They play the prostitute continually. Her rulers dearly love their shameful way. The wind has wrapped her up in its wings, and they shall be disappointed because of their sacrifices. Listen to this, you priests. Listen, house of Israel, and give ear, house of the king. For the judgment is against you. For you have been a snare at mitzvah and a net spread on Tabor. The rebels are deep in slaughter, but I discipline all of them. I know a frame, and Israel is not hidden from me. For now, Ephraim, you have played the prostitute. Israel is defiled. Their deeds won't allow them to turn to God, for the spirit of prostitution is within them, and they don't know Yahweh. The pride of Israel's, Israel testifies to its face. Therefore, Israel and Ephraim will stumble in their iniquity. Judah also will stumble with them. They go with their flocks and with their herds to seek Yahweh, but they won't find him. He has withdrawn himself from them. They are unfaithful to Yahweh, for they have borne illegitimate children. Now the new moon will devour them with their fields. Blow the cornet in Gibeah and the trumpet in Ramah. Sound a battle cry at Beth Haven. Behind you, Benjamin. Ephraim will become a desolation in the day of rebuke. Among the tribes of Israel I have made known that which I will surely be. The princes of Judah are like those who remove a landmark. I will pour out my wrath on them like water. Oh, mm, that gives me chills. Ephraim is oppressed. He is crushed in judgment because he is intent on his pursuit of idols. Therefore, I am to Ephraim like a moth and to the house of Judah like rottenness. When Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah his wound, then Ephraim went to Assyria and sent to King Jerob. But he is not able to heal you, neither will he cure you of your wound. For I will be to Ephraim like a lion, like a young lion to the house of Judah. I myself will tear in pieces and go away. I will carry off and there will be no one to deliver. I will go and return to my place. Until they acknowledge their offense and seek my face, in their affliction they will seek me earnestly. A call to repentance. Come, let us return to Yahweh, for he has torn us to pieces and he will heal us. He has injured us and he will bind up our wounds. After two days he will revive us. On the third day he will raise us up and we will live before him. Let's acknowledge Yahweh. Let's press on to know Yahweh. As surely as the sun rises, Yahweh will appear. He will come to us like the rain, like the spring rain that waters the earth. I want to read that again. Let us acknowledge Yahweh. Let us press on to know Yahweh. As surely as the sun rises, Yahweh will appear. He will come to us like the rain, like the spring rain that waters the earth. The Lord's first lament. Ephraim, what shall I do to you? Judah, what shall I do to you? For your love is like the morning cloud and like the dew that disappears early. Therefore I have cut them to pieces with the prophets. I killed them with the words of my mouth. Your judgments are like a flash of lightning. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. But they, like Adam, have broken the covenant. They were unfaithful to me there. Gilead is a city of those who work iniquity. It is stained with blood. As gangs of robbers wait to ambush a man, so the company of priests murder on the path towards Shechem, committing shameful crimes. In the house of Israel I have seen a horrible thing. There is prostitution in Ephraim. Israel is defiled. Also, Judah, there is a harvest appointed for you when I restore the fortunes of my people. Here's the hopeful part. Then the iniquity of Ephraim is uncovered. Also the wickedness of Samaria, for they commit falsehood, and the thief enters in, and the gang of robbers ravage outside. They don't consider in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. Now their own deeds have engulfed them. They are before my face. 
Well, it was one little, one little spurt of hope right there. Um, it said, it was cha uh, chapter 6, verse 11. Also, Judah, there is a harvest appointed for you when I restore the fortunes of my people. Then it goes right back into the, the um, it goes right back into, I guess you'd call them judgments. Okay, Israel's corruption. They make the king glad with their wickedness and the princes with their lives. They are all adulterers. They are burning like an oven that the baker stops stirring from the kneading of the dough until it's leavened. On the day of our king, the princes made themselves sick with the heat of wine. He joined his hands with mockers, for they have prepared their heart like an oven while they lie in wait. Their baker sleeps all the night. In the morning, it burns as a flaming fire. They are all hot as an oven and devour their judges. All their kings have fallen. There is no one among them who calls to me. Ephraim, he mixes himself among the nations. Ephraim is a pancake not turned over. Oh, that's a funny one. A frame is a pancake not turned over. Strangers have devoured his strength, and he doesn't realize it. Indeed, gray hairs are here and there on him, and he doesn't realize it. The pride of Israel testifies to his face, yet they haven't returned to Yahweh their God, nor sought him for all this. A frame is like an easily deceived dove without understanding. They call to Egypt, they go to Assyria. When they go, I will spread my net on them. I will bring them down like the birds of the sky. I will chastise them as their congregation has heard. The Lord's second lament. Woe to them, for they have wandered from me. Destruction to them, for they have trespassed against me. Though I would redeem them, yet they have spoken lies against me. They haven't cried to me with their heart, but they howl on their beds. They assemble themselves for grain and new wine. They turn away from me. Though I have taught and strengthened their arms, they plot evil against me. They return, but not to the Most High. They are like a faulty bow. Their princes will fall by the sword for the rage of their tongue. This will be their derision in the land of Egypt. Egypt? Yeah, in the land of Egypt. That's it for chapter 1 through 7 of Hosea. And I want to say the next reading is going to be the second half of Hosea. So this is only a two-day reading for this small book. And I'm going to invite you to comment or email me. The email's in the description of the YouTube channel. I'm trying to think of what else I want to say here. Um, I think that's it for today. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.